What's up guys, it's Ivan and today we are going to review a PhD in Geological Sciences from Cornell University. Before we look at the statement of purpose, I do want to remind you that I offer a statement of purpose review service on the freelance platform called Fiverr, which you can find the link down below in the description. With this service, I will provide you with detailed feedback to help you get into your dream school. I look forward to working with you. As a child, I was fascinated by how life could investigate itself and Carl Sagan's idea that we were made of the same star stuff that formed our universe stayed with me. Knowing that the cosmos were within me, I wanted to explore the stars to learn more about where we came from. However, upon learning that our nearest stellar neighbor was trillions of kilometers away, I was content with at least exploring our solar system. This drive for exploration led me to mechanical engineering, where I could work on the technical problems of the search for life in the solar system. After doing a few research projects, I learned how much I liked the scientific method and how my engineering background could help researchers to get better results by becoming an instrument scientist. In the introduction, the applicant actually takes a narrative approach to their statement of purpose. And so here we see that the applicant told us, told the reader, a little story of how they got to pursuing a PhD and their interests, right? So they talk a little bit about how they learned about the universe and how cosmos were part of how life began on Earth, right? And so that triggered an initial interest into the solar system, into galaxies, into exploring that with research, right? And so they give us a little snapshot of how they came to research what they want to research and their career and field of interest. And so when you're writing your statement of purpose introduction, you could either take the narrative approach like this applicant and explain in detail, yet very concise and to the point, how you got to your field of interest and pursuit of a PhD. In the last sentence, the applicant writes their thesis, right? And so here they say that because of this interest, this initial experience, they decided to pursue research, right? Research projects. And so that tells us as a reader, as the committee, what the rest of the statement of purpose is going to be about. So I expect that they're going to talk about their research projects and how those built on each other and how that led them to pursue a PhD in geology, essentially, right? Then at the end, they give a little description of what their career goal is, right? They want to use research to become an instrument scientist, right? And so when you're writing your introduction, I want you to do a couple of things. I want you to showcase to the committee what your research interests are, what your general interests are, why you want to do a PhD, and what career goal you want to attain once you are finished with your PhD. I started doing research in my second year as an undergraduate at the University of Puerto Rico, UPR. Looking for ways I could imply what little engineering knowledge I had from the classes I had taken up to that point, I joined a research team with Professor Oscar Resto and Dr. Stephen Massey's lab. This research focused on using sounding rocket measurements and collecting samples in the lower thermosphere, 70 km through 160 km above sea level, to do astrogenomics, a novel interdisciplinary field introduced to describe the use of metagenomics techniques to explore the universal origin and evolution of life. I learned about astrobiology from Carl Sagan, but I did not know I could study it formally until I did this research. As a member of Resto's lab, I designed an aerial gel based micrometeoroid particle captured mechanism that could deploy and hermetically seal itself during flight to bring micrometeoroid samples back to Earth for in vitro analysis of their possible organic like structure and chemical composition that is consistent with life. The mechanism, named OSCAR, Organic Sample Collector for Astrobiology Research, has flown twice, with the third flight scheduled in fall 2023. The analysis of post-flight samples presented the challenge of achieving reputable results under rigorous and controlled conditions to ensure samples are free of terrestrial contamination in the form of trace microbial and genetic materials from the Earth's surface. I worked with Dr. Ashley Matchett to develop background contamination mitigation and monitoring systems and procedures to ensure the assessment of the astrogenomic content of micrometeoroids. Within the project, I was awarded the NASA PR Space Grant Fellowship Award for two consecutive years to connect my research in upper astrophere, habitability, and biosignature detection instrumentation. So in the second paragraph, the body of the paragraph, the applicant go ahead and describes his first research project, right? So he does a couple of things really well here. He mentions where he conducted his research, right? The University of Puerto Rico in his second year. He also talks about the lab and who the advisors were. So he mentions that he was in the Restos lab working with Professor 
Professor Oscar Resto and Dr. Stephen Massey's, right? So do that in your body paragraphs when you're describing your research. Describe the lab name, describe who you're supervised under, and describe the university, right? Where the work is being conducted. Then the applicant does another good thing, and that is he mentions what the project is in one sentence, right? And so I want you to do the same thing in your body paragraphs. Mention in one sentence what the research project goals are, or maybe even the research questions. Then he goes ahead and demonstrates, shows evidence of how he's collecting his data. And he goes even beyond that. He actually created a mechanism called Oscar, right? So that's showing the committee that he can conduct sound research in science. Then he mentions another professor he worked with, so Dr. Ashley Machet, and he mentions why he needs to work with her. So he mentions how his previous work in the Restro's lab, he needed to learn how to develop background contamination mitigation. And that's why he reached out to another professor to be able to do that work. So here we already see that this student, that's applicant, can work really well in a lab with different professors, different people in the lab. Then he mentioned the implications of his work and why it matters. So he mentions that he's gotten a grant fellowship through NASA PR to be able to further develop his work. And so when you're mentioning your awards, don't just reiterate your CV or resume. Don't just say, I got this award, I got this award, and I got this award. What you want to do is you want to mention why you got that award and why it's valuable and how it's going to help the field. Outside of my university research, I had the opportunity to participate in two summer research experiences where I explored different interdisciplinary aspects of the astrobiology field. In the summer of 2021, I had the opportunity to research with Dr. Douglas Caldwell of the SETI Institute as part of an NSF-funded REU, where I worked on a mission proposed for observing the Earth as an exoplanet. The significance of this mission proposal stems from the need of accurate ground truth data of what habitable worlds look like. A dedicated spacecraft that could measure whole Earth spectra and provide polar metric imaging to measure the temporal variability of an inhabited planet would help improve models of habitable planets, guide analysis of astrophoric exoplanet measurements, and help NASA plan for future missions to look for signs of life on other planets. As part of this proposal, I got to use both NASA and commercial mission development software GMAT and STK to determine the top level mission parameters that would get the most scientific return out of a small sat form fact. The highlight of this REU was making a week-long field trip to the Allen Telescope Array and Lesson Volcanic National Park where I got to experience radio telescope science and astrobiology fieldwork. In this next paragraph, the applicant describes another research project and this one's outside of the University of Puerto Rico where he is located at. So he does a couple of things well again. So he mentions the the name of the professor, the location, right? The SETI Institute. Then he mentions the funding that he got or the funding that related to the REU. So it was another NSF funded REU. He mentions in one sentence, the purpose of the project. Then he goes into detail about the work he actually did in like one or two sentences. Finally, he ends with the implications of the work. And so that meant that he went to a week long field trip to look at the Allen Telescope Array and let in Volcanic National Park, right? And so when you're writing your body paragraphs, especially as they pertain to research experiences, I want you to use this framework. I want you to introduce the context, right? Introduce the name of the lab, the location, the supervisor. In one sentence or two, describe the purpose of the work, either research questions or one statement of the purpose of the work. Then I want you to describe in one or two sentences what you actually did to solve the questions, right? So what did you do? and describe that in detail. And the third thing that I want you to do is I want you to describe the implications of the work or how that led to your decision to pursue a PhD or graduate school at your chosen institution. The following summer, I was selected for a summer internship at John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. For this internship, I worked with Dr. Kate Kraft and Dr. Chris Bradburn at an internal research and development IRAD grant for an in-situ life detection instruments that could be used on ocean world like blank and blank. Here I had my first hands-on experience with microfluidics lab on a chip and a biomems development for the sample disruption process and life detection. This research came from the necessity of low size weight and power swap processes for the lysis of spores and cellular organisms exposing long chain polymers for life detection. In addition to working with Dr. Kraft and Bradburn, I helped test the Europa Lander Stereospectral Imaging Experiment, LSEM, instrument as part of 
of a NASA instrument concept for Europa Exploration IC2 grant. This test ensured that the imager met the planetary protection requirement for pre-flight dry heat microbial reduction DHRM. During my time at APL, I connected my research interests to the development of instruments for use in geobiology and astrobiology. In this next paragraph, the applicant again describes another summer research program he was a part of. So again, he's the same structure, right? He mentions the lab and the supervisors. He mentions his work in detail and what he did while he was at John Hopkins University. Then he mentions the connection to that work and his field of interest, right? So the last sentence is that he learned how to develop instruments for use in geobiology and astrobiology, which was part of his research interest that he talked about in the introduction of the statement of purpose. So I want you to use the same exact structure for your body paragraphs and I want to make sure that you connect every paragraph to what you wrote in your introduction as it pertains to your research interests, field of interest, and career goals. As for my graduate studies, Cornell's Geological Sciences PhD program in the Earth and Astrophysics Sciences Department will allow me to expand my scientific education and training with its wide range of courses and research topics. With EAS being an engineering department that almost entirely focuses on science and research, I can apply my engineering background to Earth and planetary science science analysis, specifically my interest in the extent of Earth's biosphere and the biology of extreme ex environment, as well as the study of Earth's oceans as analogs for solar systems, ocean worlds such as Europa and Enceladus. Cornell's extensive field sites and research locations will be helpful in evaluating methods of searching for life in alien oceans through knowledge gained from field observations and research. A great example would be getting to do research with Dr. Brittany Smith, aiding with her research on ocean technology technology to better understand ice shelves on Earth with the ice fin platform and how this could be applied to future icy world exploration missions. Moving from field research, faculty like Dr. Alexander Hayes or Dr. Riley Kohlberg's research experience with remote sensing would allow me to explore different methods of understanding the near surface hydrology of ice sheets and glaciers as anal analogs to future observations from the Europa Clipper mission. Beyond astrobiology and planetary science, this research also allows us to understand better sea level rise and the interaction between our oceans and the ice sheets. This has significant implications for climate change science, which is very important to me and our future. Being at Cornell will give me great opportunities to collaborate with significant institutions and faculty from world-renowned programs and do impactful research. In this next paragraph, the applicant writes the why this program and why this institution paragraph. And so a couple of key things that I want you to know that this applicant did really well that I want you to apply to your statement of purpose. So the applicant writes the full name of the the program, Cornell's Geological Science PhD program in Earth and Astrophysics Sciences Department. So in your why this program paragraph, write out the entire name of the program and department. Don't just use acronyms. Don't assume that they know what you're talking about. Then I want you to do a couple of things. I want you to write two to three faculty members whose research closely aligned to your interests. And I want you to write their names and what their work is and how their work applies applies to your work, how their expertise is going to help advance your work as a PhD student. Finally, if you have space and time, write out two to three other opportunities the program and department can offer to you to help advance your research. And so here this applicant does a really good job of connecting some research centers that apply to what he talked about in the rest of the statement of purpose and explained how that's going to help advance his work. Some of the common mistakes that I see in the statement of purpose in general is that applicants are are not showing evidence of how they're advancing the field already. So in this paragraph, you really want to make a case of how the program and institution fit really well with your career goals and research interests. Beyond my studies, my goal is to make lasting impacts on the community through my work, whether it is in academia, civil service, or industry. I want to position myself as a competent, knowledgeable, positive, and compelling leader who will be able to effectively use the skills and talent I acquire at Cornell to bring about a positive of change in the world. Joining this program will not only give me access to top labs, collaborators, and mentors, but it will allow me to be well-funded to pursue my research interests while contributing to the growing field of astrobiology. And so here the applicant does a really good job of closing everything out and explaining what the broader impacts of his work is going to be. And then he ends with talking about how the funding structure of the program is going to help him further his research interests and the evidence that he already proposed that he conducted through research, right? 
right? And finally, he wants to just make sure that he really speaks about his interest in astrobiology and his advancement in that field of work. So I want you to leave a lasting impression in your concluding paragraph. All right, scholars. So that concludes my video on reviewing a successful PhD statement of purpose for the Cornell's PhD in Geological Sciences program. I hope this video really provided you with some insightful insights on how you could improve your statement of purpose. Again, if you need support, I do offer a statement of purpose review service on the freelance platform called Fiverr, which is linked down below. I look forward to working with you. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.